tuning in. Today is Sunday, November the 20th, about 8.30 a.m. Pacific Coast time. I believe today is day one of the World Cup. But there is trading to do. Not at this moment. The market doesn't open till three. So we have another seven-ish, uh, six and a half hours to go before that. But what I want to do is mention that I know people like to use technical analysis, um, some to a greater extent than others. And even if people don't use technical analysis, they do like to take a look at a chart or charts every now and then. And there's nothing wrong with taking a peek at the charts. Uh, I'm not a fan of technical analysis because it simply doesn't work. Uh, I don't see any value in using it. I don't see any value in learning it. And I think it's just a lot of bunk sold by the brokerage houses and third-party services to pick up a few shekels here and there. It's not likely to help you make any money trading. However, that being said, I do like to look at charts every now and then, but I prefer to look at them in a specific way, a way that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is go over uh, a way that I like to look at charts. And this is going to be very brief. I'm not going to go in depth because it falls that would fall outside the scope of this video and probably the purpose of the channel. But anyway, let's take a quick look here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, let me shrink that. Okay, this is a daily chart of the S&P um, 500, and I'm using TradingView. You can see up here, this is TradingView.com. Okay, so it looks like this chart goes back pretty much year to date. Let me hit that tab to make sure. There we go. All right, so this price action covers 2022. Now, what we have here on a very basic level, and this is a very basic chart, is price, and these are daily bar charts with respect to time. Uh, I'll highlight this bar, for example. This is a bar that happened on October the 13th. The market opened at 35.20. The high of the day was 36.85. The low was 34.91, and it closed at 36.69. Very simple. Scroll to the left, you're going to go back in time. Scroll to the right, you're going to go forward in time to the last day of trading uh, this year, which was this past Friday, the 18th. Very quiet day, by the way. And this was Thursday. Let me go to Monday of Thursday, Friday the 11th, Monday the 14th. Okay, so we had a very, very quiet week so to speak, especially since, uh, let's say, the 14th of October, 13th of October. Okay, now, these, bar, these bars, each individual bar, daily bar, as I mentioned, price with respect to time. Now, let's add in another indicator here. Let's go to volume. And now, we have volume on a daily basis with respect to time. So if, if I scroll to the left, I'll stop here. We see that on Friday, March the 18th of this year, looks like this is a fairly high volume day relative to the other days. So what you're getting here is, and this day the volume was, looks like, uh, why is that B 4.056 billion? Is that, wow, well, is that more than I think? Okay, regardless, this was a heavy volume day. I'm gonna scroll to February the 24th, another high volume day. Monday, Jan 24th, another high volume day. June 17th, Friday, another high volume day. This was a big down day, it looks like. Friday, the 16th of September, yet another high volume day. And 
basically what we have here is volume with respect to time. Scroll to the left, you go back in time. Scroll to the right, you go forward in time. Is this helpful? Well, I can't really, I can't use it to make any money or figure out how to make any money. So I'm going to say no. Okay, let me get rid of this. But what might be helpful? Well, what about if we use volume with respect to price? Now, why might that be helpful? Because you basically get a pretty decent idea of supply and demand at discrete price points. And what that tells you or might be able to tell you is where the where the action in the market, where the action in terms of price was favored by the market. So if there's a lot of supply and demand at a certain price, there's going to be a lot of trade activity there. And if there's low volume at a certain price, that means low supply and demand, there's not going to be a lot of volume there. So that type of area will get rejected by the market. And the rejection comes in two forms. It will either be support. So let's say price is going down and hits this area that it doesn't like. So now it moves up. That's support. And let's say the market is heading up and it gets to an area it doesn't like and it moves down. So that rejection comes in the form of resistance. All right. So anyway, let's take a look. Let's take a simple look here at what volume profile will look like and voila now we see to the right that these high now this changed because i changed the amount of data here i pulled the, the i pulled the chart to the left and pulling it back to the right so it should change slightly again because i'm pulling in more data but let's keep it right here for now and we'll see that this bar that i'm looking at uh, it's pricing at 41, 41.75. There was obviously there was quite a bit of trading activity at that price level. Down here, 39.63, more trading activity. At this area, we have 4,067, not a lot of trading activity. Here's an area where there wasn't much trading activity, 43.52. So the market moved uh, away from that price, either above or below it. Uh, in this case, it looks like it moved below it because we can see here that this bar, this bar, this daily bar chart right here, once it went in this area, there wasn't a lot of trade, not a lot of supply and demand. So the price moved away. Now, without getting into too many details, I just want to give a brief demonstration of what a volume profile indicator looks like. And again, what this is basically showing is it illustrates the relationship of volume with respect to price as opposed to the other way that most people look at it, which is volume with respect to time, which is down here. I think I don't think you can really get much out of that although I do not feel the same about uh, volume profile indicator because I think this might be relevant information and you can possibly use it to pick price points. All right, what do I mean by that? Let me go to another one that I set up here. This is another daily, forget about that. And here we have the same type of indicator. This is a volume profile indicator. However, the bar chart that I'm using is an hourly bar chart. And in this area, this is the hourly bar chart for last week. And I also used a fixed range, a fixed range for the volume profile, and I set it to last week. So the parameters were basically previous Monday and last Friday, which was two days ago. So six days back, all the way up to two days back. 
let me make sure this is right. Yes, the date here, Thursday, November 22nd. Thursday, November 22nd, 10th, the 10th. So this is actually, no, actually this isn't just a weekly. I went back to this action, uh, this price area action where we basically gapped open higher uh, after the CPI number. Last uh, Thursday, the 10th, I believe it was, was the CPI number and the market rocketed higher. So rather than this, um, this area being Monday, last Monday through last Friday, it's actually Thursday the 10th through last Friday. But anyway, the point is I wanted to set up uh, a separate volume profile indicator for just this price, this uh, price range and this date range. And here's what we get. We get the same thing. We see that there's, there was a lot of action in this price area, 39.53. Uh, a little bit less price action, 39, we're going to call this 89. And overall for the week, let's take a look at the range here. The low was 38.64 and the high, or not the week, but this this uh, date range. And the high was 40.28, so roughly 164 handles in this range from Thursday the 10th to two days ago, the 18th, yes. So a total of, um, I got, uh, that's nine, seven days, seven trading days of price action. 10th through the 18th uh, is nine, take out the weekend, seven days. Okay, so this is what happened. Now, why would I want to take a look at this? I was just screwing around with this program a little bit and I was playing around with some lines, blah, blah, blah. But why I would want to possibly take a look at it is to see what kind of follow through or rejection we might get this upcoming week, which is a holiday week. It's a shortened week. I'm going to assume there's going to be lighter volume because people will just be away from the market, uh, spend time with family. They have to travel, go on vacation, et cetera, et cetera. So what might we see here? I would not be surprised to see prices go up here, which would be 39.91, which isn't a big stretch. And if they do travel down, this seems like an area of rejection, 39.32. My test here, this seems like another area of possible uh, rejection. It, it could also be it could also turn into, it could turn into support, but I would not be surprised to see it go through this, through this, and maybe to this area, which would be 3836. So we would have to move down, I don't want to say quite a bit, but 3836, uh, almost 100, 100 and, uh, 30, 129, 129 handles, which could very easily happen. If it's gonna happen on a light volume week, this week, I don't know. But anyway, I can start to use this to formulate some ideas of where I think there might be points of interest in terms of price for the upcoming week. Now, whether it's gonna to go to the places, the areas I mentioned, who knows? I don't know. And frankly, at this point, I don't care because I haven't set up any trades yet but I will start to pay more attention to this tomorrow and I will take a peek at what the futures are doing throughout the day, today, later today, once the market opens. Okay, so hopefully, um, hopefully that brought up a few points, uh, a little something to consider. The program that I just used is called TradingView. They do have a free trial. 30-day free trial and I don't know what the prices are I think if you want a monthly it's something like ten eleven dollars a month which is no big deal if you want to try it out and play around with it and take a closer look at the volume profile indicator and they give you a discount if you subscribe for a year and they have different packages but I don't I don't think the more expensive packages are necessary the one I have is a very basic package because all I'm basically using is the volume profile indicator. I don't care about any of the other stuff. I don't care about any of the other technical stuff whatsoever. I'm never going to use it. I'm never going to look at it. But if that's something that interests you, feel free to do so.
anyway, that's trading view and that's the brief that's a brief discussion of volume profile indicator. Okay, everyone, I hope that was helpful. Enjoy watching the World Cup games. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Good luck trading this week. I will catch y'all later.